come over here. We'll, we'll just get started on some basic stuff. Okay. Don't show up. But, okay. So, again, I know we've got to have multiple levels, and neither of you have really played much, right? You played tennis, and um, this you played tennis. Oh, she's played tennis. <laughs> okay. And this is Laura and Sharon. Yeah, right? okay. yeah. Great. So, pickleball is. Um, completely different game but it's got a lot of some things uh, consistent with tennis in terms of the stroke maybe the serve and some of the return shots but a lot of this game is about control and changing the pace of the ball getting into what we call thinking rallies into in the kitchen around the kitchen and what we're really trying to do is introduce the idea of hitting a ball that the other your opponents can't attack so it becomes a fairly, really strategic kind of fun game. But the stroke is really different, and a lot of this, I, I think, is about breathing and about really slowing down. Because there's a tendency when we're doing any sport to kind of speed up and basically overhit or run around. And we do that in particular when we don't really know what our intentions are in any of these shots. So uh, we're going to start out by just talking about the basic uh, stroke, if you will. And, um, and then we're going to talk about the serve, we're going to go through some of the, the actual uh, rules of it and, and talk to you about it. So hopefully when you leave here, you're going to have some idea of how to go out and have some fun. It's one of the great things about this game, unlike any other, it's like you go to a park with your kids and everyone's screaming, yelling, teasing each other, whatever. And it's just so much fun. You can play at multiple levels and not feel like you're being patronized or whatever you can have a really good one. But a lot of this stroke, in particular the short stuff, is done with more of a levered action. It gives you the ability to kind of control the pace of the ball. So you'll find that as the more you play, the more confidence you'll get to basically develop your own style. But we basically start by doing this. Hitting up in the ball with a rack paddle head down and just a motion like this with no wrist and you're trying to take your wrist out of it because a lot of times the wrist is what calls the ball to pop up and in this short space is when all of a sudden the opponent has the opportunity and it's advantage to basically do it. So the game plan is what we know about so the game is basically kind of lift up and this is kind of what we would be doing for the first part of this. And then we'll integrate that into different parts of the court because um, this game, to get to the net, as you'll learn in the rules and the structure of it, you have to try to hit a short ball, a game like this, over a longer period, uh, a longer uh, court cover, and to basically drop in front of this so that you can get it. Yeah, yeah. We had one, we had one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Peter. I'm Peter. Richard, how you doing? Good. Nice to meet you. Francine. Francine, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Hi, yeah. And this is Sharon and Laura. Hi, Sharon. Richard. Richard, yes. Richard, right. Okay. And I just want you to know we're not streaming this live, oh, but you are doing this on video. Um, so tell me a little bit about your background with pickleball. You we, play? We play. We play in our back in our neighborhood. Okay, great. The last year With our boys who are very athletic. Okay, super. And so we know some things, but we're not. All right. I think we play more tennis than we do. Well, and that's what a lot of people do. I played tennis for well over sixty years, and three years ago, I hung up all my tennis rackets and have not picked up the racket since because this is so much fun, yeah. and uh, you can play with people like Sharon, who have never played before oh, and probably haven't played a lot of tennis. Never. So it's one of these games that it's, it's so much fun and so social that it really is one of the, I think, the driving factors in the growth of the sport. Well, our, uh, and around us, they're painting all the tennis courts with lines for, and they even made a whole pickleball. Complex. Where do you guys live? Boca. Bo oh, you do? Great. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's it's also something that I think, from a broader standpoint, you look at all the tennis courts in public communities, public parks that are getting no use, and, and even in Florida, it's the, the play of tennis is diminishing. And this is not just an amenity for places; it's a it's a real revenue generator. There's a lot of opportunities for camps and things, and it's really the, the sport is exploding. So we're going to hopefully dispel a little bit of, of some of the tennis in you, 
and teach you a little bit more about some of the pickleball stuff. But it's uh -huh. nice to have you all here. Thanks. And I'm glad, I'm glad to come to Sundial. But so we were just talking about kind of the basic concept of the game, which which really is um, which is um, taking control and not doing all the banging. And it's basically trying to learn to slow yourself down and to basically be able to control the flight of the ball into this little kitchen area that we call the non-volley zone. And you don't you know the rules, but we'll kind of refresh those as well as we go. But we're gonna start out by hitting and when we take a break, we'll come back and I'll tell talk to you about the rules because then what we'll do with after we do a little dinking at the net, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do serving and returning. And again, one of the things that, that I was I expressed to Sharon and Laura is one of the challenges when you're taking up any new game is that your mind starts racing because you really don't know what you're supposed to be doing and what your intention should be before the ball comes to you so you're reacting instead of basically taking control which is really what this is this is just a battle of control who can dominate you you when you're not hitting are there to neutralize what somebody else is doing and in the same way you're trying to hit balls to the other person that they can't deal with so so come on up to net let's get um, why don't we have you guys go with each other so we'll be coming warm up and that's fine. Yeah, you yeah, no, against me. Against me. Yep. So in pickleball, if you were in a tournament, or, in no, once you right here on the, on the half. So you warm up. If you were to play in a match, you warm up with your partner on opposite sides of the court. Okay. Uh, usually when you're playing with a bunch of friends, you just pick up the ball and you all kind of go a little bit. And I wanted to kind of demonstrate the things and, and ask you kind of what you see because this is a little different stroke. If, you, if I was to throw the ball, for instance, to Sharon, I would, I would go like this, right? If you were throwing to one of your children, throw me the ball. Throw me that ball with your right hand. Okay, perfect. Now, this is what you're doing with the game. If your paddle head is down and you're doing the same thing. And this is all I want you to do. If each of you try to think about this. What else do you see in my body? I don't know. Right? All of those are good. A lot of what you see is, a lot of times what happens in tennis is we're doing a lot of this thing, a lot of things with the elbow, and what you can do is you're going to leverage, you're not using the wrist, 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 but not on it. I want you to try and get a forehand. Get back to the nice and easy. Good. Try it again. 